lesson 10 we're going to be looking at delta or mesh connections and it's Dr Ken here with you today so let's get started broken this lesson into two parts delta connected uh, generators slides 1 to 11 and then delta connected loads uh, slides 12 to 18 here we have uh, the two different ways we tend to draw delta connections. On the left hand side you can see we've got the uh, start of the A phase connected to the finish of the B, then the finish of the B connected to the start of the C, and then the end of the C connected back to the A. So effectively it's start, finish, start, finish, which effectively kind of produces a series parallel network. We can also draw it over here on the left hand, on the right hand side, I should say, and connect using this kind of arrangement. Again, it's the same, but the right hand drawing is more like a circuit diagram, nice and compact, and represents what's going on, where the one on the left is maybe more like a connection diagram. So, Delta Connection has three lines only to transmit three phase power. The start of each winding connects to the end of the next. And uh, as I said, um, it's a kind of a, a delta arrangement because when you uh, look at the way it's connected, it looks like that, which is the Greek symbol delta. So a simple triangle is the Greek symbol delta. That's why we call it delta. Now the reason we also use a mathematical term called mesh is because this circuit also looks like a series parallel network. Now this works from either any of the three directions. So let's say I'm looking into this circuit at this point and at this point. If I look at the circuit, you'll see that I simply have A phase and B phase are connected in series and all of that is then connected in parallel with C phase. And I get that effect no matter which two connections I use. So I end up with this kind of pseudo series parallel network. Hence, the connection method is often called mesh. But the skill here is to be able to recognize a delta connection whether it's drawn as a connection diagram or whether it's drawn as a circuit diagram over on the right. So let's have a look at the voltages around a delta circuit. So here on the left hand side you can see we have our A phase, B phase, C phase in a standard delta configuration. We have our terminals A, B and C. The voltages, we only have line voltages. So line volts, line volts A and B, line volts C. So there's only those three. So the line and phase voltages in a delta connection are the same. So that's an important thing uh, to remember. It's the exact opposite of, uh, of star. So in delta, V line equals V phase. And of course, as we're about to discover, the currents are different again. So for voltage, which is what we're looking at on this slide, V line equals VP for delta. So we're looking at across the phase. You can obviously see that's volts phase, but it's also volts line. So voltages around a delta connection. So here we simply are going to add up. So phase a diagram for voltage delta. 
So again, let me just turn on the pen and A phase is our reference. So it's a phaser diagram, so it's rotating around here. There's 120 degrees between the phases. Can't be anything but, because that's the way the machine is physically wired. So that's our standard arrangement. 120 degrees from VA, VC, and volts B. And again, notice that we have labeled them clockwise, but it's rotating anti-clockwise. Now to find out what the sum of the voltages are, we're simply going to add up the VC to the VB. So we simply parallelogram our VC. Do the same thing again, parallelogram our V, B, we end up with that point there, we project back to the origin, and we have the voltage addition of V, B plus V, C. You'll notice it's at 180 degrees opposite to volts A. I'll just get to write that 180 properly here first. So 180 degrees. Therefore, the addition of VB plus VC, put those in brackets because we added them together first, plus VA. equals zero volts. They cancel each other out. That's one of the big advantages of a delta system. Everything cancels and self balances. So for a phasor diagram, delta connection, sum of the voltages around the phases equals zero. But what about delta currents? So again, we have currents both in our generator. So here's our generator. I just use a, you know, a nice big G to indicate generator. And over here, this is our load, nice big L to indicate load. And we've got currents. So the line currents in a delta connected system are the phasor sum of the individual phase currents distributing to the line currents. So we've got line current here. And as that line current comes to this point, it actually breaks into two currents. And then as the currents come through here, they come back into one current. So Kirchhoff's law still applies for what we call nodal theory. The sum of the currents in the node have to equal the sum of the currents out of the node at any instant in time. But of course, there are, is a phase angle between the currents, which we must account for. So we're going to have a look at how we deal with those currents as they come through or come out of different parts of a delta network. So here's our diagram again.
On the left hand side we have the phaser diagram, on the right hand side we have the connection drawing. So again we have our generator and our load and this phaser here represents the currents in phase AB. This one represents the currents BC and this one represents the currents CA. Because basically we've got currents oscillating backwards and forwards so here we have currents coming out of our generator combining here to give us our AB we have currents here combining to give us BC and we have currents here combining to give us AC hence the labels so let's now that we understand that let's come back to our phaser diagram and you'll notice this is a phaser diagram now of currents so the horizontal to the right is still the reference so we've just kept a phase as the reference but you'll notice it's a current so the phase current in A that's this one phase current in A over here we have current IB let's go this direction and this is the current here phase current IB and of course then this one has to be the phase current IC remember they have been wound at 120 degrees apart and since they've been wound at 120 degrees apart they will remain at 120 degrees so as a phaser diagram we can actually close the top between the two it's the same as doing a phaser addition and we end up with the line current so from that we can see that the line current is greater than the phase current phase current is this line it's much shorter than this line so the phase current is out of phase with the line current by this magical number of 30 degrees again so if you haven't guessed already there's going to be a root 3 relationship between the current in the line and the current in the phase we can redraw the circuit diagram using our standard three phase phaser diagram so let's have a, a look at that just another way of doing the same diagram all all the phases at the same time and again here's our reference but this time we've actually referenced in our voltages so voltage for A voltage for B voltage for C all at our 120 degrees but now we've introduced just current so here's the current in A phase the current in B phase and the current of course in C phase if we now do an addition and we do an addition of let's start with A and B so current 
A and current B. We just project the current A up at 180 degrees. Parallelogram our current IA, our IB, and the result when we project back to zero is this one here, the purple one. And you can see here's our 30 degrees. And we can do that parallelogram for B phase, C phase. We're going to end up, these are all going to end up being the same value with the same angle. So the important thing to remember from this particular phase of diagram is the current relationship between the phase and line currents in a delta connected system. It's 30 degrees. So this brings us to our second formula, which is very similar to star, except we've now almost completely reversed the way we look at it. So in a delta system, the line current is equal to the phase current multiplied by the square root of 3. So I line is equal to root 3 times I phase. If we rearrange the equation, the terms of current, or phase current in particular, we get, if we want to know what the phase current is, the phase current is the line current divided by square root of 3. So there are two important equations that we need to know and understand around delta connections. So again, I'd suggest you pause the video, take the time to go and make sure you can find this equation on your equation sheet. Once you have that equation, you can simply transpose it to get that equation.